Spreaker.com. Friends, we are live all over the world. We are glad to be here. So good to see you. So good to be back on here. Hey, uh, Twitter and Periscope, hold your thoughts and your questions, please. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we get on here and get this message out. Glad to be on here. Pastor Rick Rell here live at Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Uh, late night, early morning, uh, Friday, getting into the message series continued, friends. And uh, boy, am I glad to see you. Glad to be here. Glad to be on live. It's our Friday morning, early morning podcast, friends. Just getting a few little messages out there. Hey, man, as I'm battling mosquitoes again and trying not to sneeze. It's Periscope. I appreciate you guys being here. Twitter, thanks for being here live. Hold your thoughts. Hold your questions, please, till the end of the podcast. I'll be glad to get together with you and uh, talk about uh, your questions. Amen. Glad to be here. Friday morning. Let's get going, friends. Uh, we're live. And uh, I've got all kinds of stuff going on. We're here live with uh, Spreaker.com, Anchor, CastBox, and Twitter Periscope, of course. Just got off the live chat or live line with our Facebook Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast channel. And, of course, uh, Blog Talk Radio earlier. Uh, I try to get on there every single day at 330 uh, going to be uploading more and uh, updating actually more hours there probably an hour and a half uh, twice a day you know the spirit's been revealing so much to me and uh, I just uh, you know there's just not enough hours in the daytime to get all the messages out so we've added more time upgrading updating a- information man oh man is it cool Hey, let's get into it, friends. Right into it. We got uh, no time to waste. Um, Friday morning, podcast live, AM. Uh, glad you guys are hanging out with me. Uh, good grief, it's almost 2 o'clock. Really? Hey, I'm still podcasting the message, amen. Uh, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast, Pastor Rick Rell here live on the internet radio, live, giving you some uh, spirit-filled message. The Holy Spirit is welcome here. Glad you guys are here. You guys can catch this live at Twitter and Periscope. Of course, all the social media uh, channels. Got another mosquito. And, uh, of course, battling them. Hey, uh, let's get into the message. Friends, let's do this right now. Uh, I want to get the shout-out list. Friends, if you want to make the list, hit me up. Let me know what's going on. I'll get you on the list, friends. Amen. For sure. Uh, all right, so we've got everything dialed up, ready to go. We're on the air, friends. Another live podcast coming your way. Blasting the devil with God's precious words. Hey, Amen. We've got everything tuned up, dialed up. Let's get the shout out list, shall we? Uh, as I'm trying not to sneeze, I've been battling that all day. Our Facebook brother, uh, Mark, over at Christian Watchers of the 2017 2024 Solar. Eclipse group, check them out and obey the rules and be nice because Brother Mark will get on you about that. Hey, just be nice. It's a great group, friends. Check it out, seriously. Amen. Hey, Miss Christina. Amen. Glad, uh, grateful for your uh, support and uh, so glad that you're there and uh, helping. Uh, it's so cool. Appreciate you so much. Of course, uh, my friend Sophie on uh, my CBN. Friends, go check it out. Christian Broadcasting Network. Hey, there, it's it's really cool. Go check the line out uh, and join the group, friends. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Of course, Laura, uh, my good Facebook friend, uh, always thanking you for your support. That's really cool. And of course, Miss Tiffany Blackwell Ministries at Facebook.com. Check her out, friends. Very prophetic messages. Very awesome. 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 Is that awesome? Awesome. Uh, and of course, everybody at all the Facebook uh, media channels uh, appreciate you so much. That's so awesome. Just getting the word out, being obedient to what your uh, what spirits calling me to. And of course, my last my friend, of course, I can't miss you, Miss Susan. You made the list, darling. Thank you so much. That is so cool. Appreciate you so much. All right, friends. If you want to make the list, here's what you do. 
You go to the Facebook page. You go to any one of the podcast channels all over the network, all over the world, and uh, I'll get you on there. I really will. I appreciate that uh, so much. Hey, man, let me adjust my microphone again. It's kind of working, actually. I kind of like it the way it is. It's been doing really well. Uh, dialed in, toned in, set up, pens ready, paper, notebook, palette, tablet, coffee, big book of love. Now, tomorrow, I'll be on live at uh, the uh, Blog Talk Radio, 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, I'll be, uh, I'm going to skip the Bible study for tonight in the book of Luke. I believe we are at chapter 16. Um, I might jump into that. It depends on what the Spirit shifts me to. But I got this really cool message, and I really want to get going on it. Uh, it's uh, God's Grace for You, the series, uh, friends. And uh, I believe I'm going to be doing a new creation in Christ, friends. I'll be up, kind of backtracking a little bit, sharing that message with you, and uh, you know, just getting that message out. Now, let me, uh, let me uh, look. I got I even got to put put a suit jacket on for you. Friends, hey, that's how snazzy we are tonight here, friends. Getting a mess, gel. <clears throat> Where's my coffee? Uh, the devil's been agitating me all night. Hey, man, glad to be here. Let's get going. Let's kick it off. We got the shout-out list already out of the way. You know where we're at. You know how to get a hold of us, friends. Anytime, day or night, it don't matter. We're working for God and that's he, that's our that's our boss, friends. We got to work for. We gotta just put that word out and do that. What he says, what he commands. Amen. All right. I know this is different. Well, let's just get right into it. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now. Just so grateful and honored to continue your message, to continue this podcast. God, is, you have called me to this mission, and I greatly received it. And moving forward in your calling and your mission. I just want to thank you so much, God, for everything you provided, everything you've given me and shown me and and just uh, given me this knowledge, uh, this revelation, insight, knowledge, this grace that you've uh, given me. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, God, you know what's in my heart. You know, I, I just want to lift up my friends, all the viewers, the, uh, you know, the, the friends that are out there that are watching here and listening and, and just observing what you've given me, I lift them up right now, give them courage, hope, strength, power, and um, encouragement. Uh, God, as uh, you know, I'm the light uh, that you've called. We are the light. Those of us that have received it, we are the light. And we need to uh, uplift our brothers and sisters out there that are struggling and having such a hard time. So I lift them up right now in your, in your power, your mighty name, God. I just lift this up to you. As I uh, continue your mission, continue this podcast, and and uh, you know you strengthen me, God, so I can strengthen others. As, as I just uh, shepherd, uh, continue to shepherd the sheep and, and build them up, and, and, and for Your glory, God. So I just lift this up right now in Your precious name, in Your Son's precious name, right now, Jesus' holy name, Amen. All right, friends, we're continuing our podcast. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and uh, as we're live all over the internet right now we are live at uh, anchor spreaker.com and of course our uh, castbox.com friends right here live at Twitter and Facebook hold all your comments uh, because I've got a lot to share with you a lot to give you and uh, I'm not answering any questions right now. I just want to get this message out. It's so important, so vital that I get this uh, message out there. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. That is so cool. Uh, let's armor you up, friends. Can you get your Bibles out and go to uh, go over to uh, Ephesians 6, 10, and 20? And thanks for the pink hearts. That is awesome on our Periscope Twitter channel. Uh, our moderators are out. They're watching the channel with cameras. Uh, I've had to do that just because I got so bombarded with so much evil comments. Um, you know, I'm just a messenger, friends. I'm just a messenger getting God's message out. And uh, if you attack me, you're attacking God. And um, 
you know, I'm just I'm just doing what God told me to do. All right, so there we go. I want to make sure we're still on the air here. Amen, as I've got the cameras and stuff pulled up. But I appreciate you guys that are on there. Pink hearts are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Armor of God, friends. Ephesians 6, 10, and 20. Uh, out of the NIV, you know, because of spiritual attacks daily, every single day, we're in a spiritual warfare. We've got to get this armor on, friends. I know, I'm watching my friends just have such a hard time and struggle uh, it would just daily, just because they're not putting their armor on, they're not walking in the spirit. So, I'm armoring you up, friends. I'm getting you the armor of God. Ephesians six ten and twenty. And NIV. Uh, finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, and put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme, or schemes, his plans, friends. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, uh, stand firm that, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Hey Amen. Thanks for uh, hanging out there. Uh, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is, we know, the word of God. It's our Bible, friends. Hey Amen. All right. Now let's see what's going on with our volume level here because I know I've got much more volume amen than that and uh, I think it's there I don't know I'll check it out anyway well we know that's the Bible friends our our life right there word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests and with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people pray also for me that whenever I speak words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains and pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should let me go to my notes here friends uh, I got this marked out as 1, 2, and 3 because it's talking about the spiritual warfare uh, the warfare weaponry and readiness he's given us that armor that readiness uh, the first one is spiritual warfare verse 10 through 12 the weaponry is in verse 13 and the spiritual readiness is in verse 14 through 20 uh, check it out friends now I have done a full podcast on the armor of God already and uh, pretty exciting stuff uh, so uh, friends uh, you guys at uh, Periscope and Twitter thanks for joining me uh, live on the air uh, hold your comments, hold your thoughts I appreciate you being there, I really do uh, God has shown me so much I just want to get this message out uh, Amen, I just want to uh, share this message with you the good news gospel as I'm trying to organize my notes here Hey, uh, let's uh, let's do this friends uh, we need to repent and receive Christ into our hearts friends so if you if you're willing, if you want to, friends, accept ready. If you're ready to accept Christ in your hearts, say this prayer with me. Get a hold of me. As I was reminded by the Spirit, uh, again, He said in Matthew five seventeen, uh, from that time Jesus uh, began to preach and to say, "Repent, for the kingdom is at hand." So, let's open up, let's say this prayer uh, the sinner's prayer of salvation friends. accept Christ in your hearts, amen dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for me, and I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the son of God and I believe you are the Lord and that God raised you from the dead please forgive me of my sins and wash my heart clean come and live in my heart, be the Lord of my life, and fill me with your Holy Spirit 
teach me to walk with you and live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me and for giving me the gift of life or the eternal life in heaven with you. Now you you said that prayer. Good for you, friends. I'm glad you did it. Amen. Now, now we have the walk with God. Amen. That's pretty cool. All right, so get a hold of us here, Life Grace Ministry 60 at gmail.com. That is the official email address contact for our ministry friends, and I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for the green hearts. That is awesome. Uh, hold all your comments and your thoughts, please. I just want to get this message out. I'll, I can talk to you afterwards if you want, and I'd be more than happy to share the good news gospel with you. You can be free, friends. It's a personal relationship, friends, not a religion. There's a difference. And that's what I'm preaching, the grace. Uh, somebody called me like a grace preacher or something like that. Uh, thank you very much. I'll take that. Uh, that's okay uh, because uh, it's a, uh, it's about a personal relationship, friends. Uh, it's, it's a personal relationship, not a, a religion. Not shoving nothing down nobody's throat, just trying to, be obedient and do what God told me to do. Amen. So, as I was reminded of this, John three fifteen and 17, that whoever believes in him should not perish. That's good news, friends. That's his promise right there. But have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And it will be saved. Amen. That's so cool. All right, as my notes are falling all over the place here, friends, I want to get into this message here real quick. Uh, and I looked at uh, 2 Corinthians 3.31. Uh, if you got your Bibles out, friends, uh, that would be awesome because we're having a Bible study tonight, friends. We are. We're having a little bit of a Bible study. Appreciate you taking time out. Hold your thoughts. Uh, got a lot to say, a lot to give you. Second uh, Corinthians three thirty one, friends. It reads, and we got to remind ourselves of this too. Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. You show that you are a letter from Christ, written not with ink but with the Spirit of the living God. We have the Spirit of the living God inside of us. We just got to remember to activate it, friends. That's the difference. Amen. And you got to work your faith like a slave, friends. Amen. All right, I'm just going through a few little Bible study notes here, messages, friends. Glad you guys are here. We're hanging out. It's late night, early morning, as I'm looking at the clock in the studio, friends. Brand new from the live studio uh, up north next to the goats and the coyotes. I'm not kidding, friends. I literally have a studio at a barn. It's so cool. Uh, great opportunity to uh, really settle in and do podcasts full time. Uh, I'm still working on the schedule. Somehow, some way, I'll get, out, get that out, written up, and, and set up for you. And uh, I'll post it on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to like if you like if if you're hearing something if if the spirit touches your heart, friends. Don't forget uh, to like and subscribe at Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast and Online Community Church at YouTube.com, friends. All the messages, everything's loaded straight over there. That is our mothership, and don't forget Facebook, friends. We've got a Facebook page, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Pastor Rick Rally here giving it God's precious word. It's life-giving, friends. It's life-giving. And I, I'm glad to do it. So, Romans 5, 1 and 2, as the Spirit shifted me again, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God, friends, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace, whom we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory and troubles. And know that tribulation produces perseverance and character hope. And hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. 
All right, well, there you go, friends. I'm still working on some notes. I've got to put some stuff together for you, but I got plenty NLT uh, coming up, friends. Before we get into our main message here, uh, as, uh, okay, let me get my computer running again here. I know, it's pretty cool. Hey, NLT, living water for those who thirst, friends. If you if you want one, let me know. Hit me up, lifegraceministry60 at gmail.com. I will get one out to you. I don't know how I'll do it. I'll ship one out to you. Just send me your address, contact, and I'll send one out to you. Uh, this is life-giving, friends. Life-saving, giving, amen, for eternal life. So let's look at this passage here, friends. I wanted to give this to you. I wanted to share this with you. I think I've done it before. Uh, amen. And uh, I love this book. It's really uh, like uh, amazing. I've been going through quite a bit here. Uh, so I want to give this to you. God saved us for a purpose. As a non-believer, you had nothing to motivate you to live righteously. You may have searched for purpose and meaning in the life or in life, but found nothing satisfying. As a believer, however, you are God's masterpiece. Don't forget, friends, you are God's masterpiece. And uh, he wants you to have eternal life. So, which means that his spirit is working in your life to make you more like Christ and to give you a purpose for living. This verse describes part of the purpose God has for your life as his child to do good works by helping others. The amazing and wonderful truth about God's purpose for your life is that he, what, what did he do? He had plans for you to do good works long before you even existed. He's already scheduled the days and events of your life with opportunities to tangibly share his love with others. In Psalms 139 and 16 and also in Jeremiah 29 11, the next time you see a neighbor in trouble, hear about a friend struggling with a problem, notice a co-worker in distress, or see a stranger who genuinely needs a helping hand, Take hold of this opportunity God has placed in your path and let your good deeds shine in Matthew 5.16 because you are his child, friends. Amen. Man, there you go. Uh, you've already been loaded up, my friends. I've got lots more to give you. Let me go in here and... Uh, Let's see. How about this one, friends, in the cornerstone section of this? This is really cool. Cr uh, place Christ uh, before all else. And uh, like I said at the top of the hour, at our Twitter and Facebook, friends, we have our moderators on full alert and watching this channel, taking pictures of, uh, of the pages and stuff. Uh, I had to do that. I had to get moderators to come in here and take pictures because we've been attacked so much on the Twitter Live and Periscope channel. And uh, so we had to uh, place our moderators to monitor the IP addresses of everybody that comes on the channel. I, I just didn't have any other choice. I really had to just go in there and do that uh, because of the attacks. So uh, God is watching. Amen. He really is. So I'm glad uh, that that is being taken care of. I don't have to worry about that. Amen. So thanks for the blue hearts. That is awesome. Hold your thoughts, please. I'm just getting the message out. So looking at the NLT, uh, off and running, uh, place Christ before all else. As verses 4, 6 attest, the Apostle Paul was the, uh, was the epitome of a good Jew. He had been born a member of God's chosen people and had flawlessly kept God's law. But when Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, 1, 19, Paul realized that everything he was living for was taking him in the wrong direction. For that reason, he counted everything else in life, his reputation, his achievements, his pursuits, his possessions, worthlessness, or worthless, uh, so that his sole pursuit would be knowing and serving Jesus. 
Do you, like Paul, place Christ above everything else in your life? If you are not sure, ask yourself the following questions. How do you spend your time? What dominates your thoughts? Where are your priorities? What motivates you? If the most important thing in your life is Jesus, then your life will revolve around getting to know him more and more. You will want to spend time learning about his nature, his will, and his purposes for you and his word, and you will truly be able to say that you have discovered the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus. Now that is good stuff, friends. Amen. All right, so I gotta I gotta include this one. I've got to give you this one, friends. In uh, first steps here, uh, prayer helps us overcome worry, and we're in Philippians four, six, and seven. Uh, have you ever been gripped by worry and fear? Worthy or worry is a completely unproductive emotion. It is the advanced interest we pay on troubles that seldom come. But these verses give us the best antidote for worry. That's prayer. God wants us or wants to be the first one we run to in times of worry or crisis. When we do, he promises a special blessing uh, if we do the following four things. Now, you can write this down if you're taking notes one through four. See, now this talks about being or getting into the flesh. When we let our emotions overwrite everything, we push God completely out of the picture. And we can't do that. Uh, those of us that accepted Christ and walk with Christ every day, uh, we have to trust and rely on God at all times, no matter what. Uh and not get into our five senses, because that's getting into the flesh. And it takes a lot. It takes some work. It does take some practice uh, to be able to uh, do that. But you can do it. it. You will do it. I mean, it's it, just trust in God. And so, when you get angry, when you get frustrated, when you get depressed, uh, oppressed, depressed, it, God doesn't make us that way, friends. He doesn't want us to be that way. Uh, he wants us to be happy, joyful, productive, uh, you know. So we got to remember, don't get into the flesh. Don't get into the five senses because that's the attack of the enemy. The enemy comes in there to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, he is the father of lies and, and deception. And uh, we can't, uh, can't do that, friends. So as I continue in, prayer helps us overcome worry. Uh, four steps here out of the NLT living water for those who thirst stop worrying and start praying don't ever think that your need is too insignificant for God's attention he wants us to pray about everything so there you go friends right off the bat here number one number two uh, tell God your needs even though God is all-knowing and is well aware of your situation, he desires that you verbalize your needs to him and place them in his hands. Now, number three, present your requests with thanks. Instead of praying with feelings of doubt, we can thank God for his answers in advance because of the promises he has made to are made to us in his word. That's really good. Now, number four, receive God's peace. Once you do these things, and verse seven says that you will uh, experience God's peace. In the original Greek text, this verse literally means that God's peace will mount a guard or garrison uh, around your heart and mind to keep uh, to keep and protect you during those difficult times in your life. The next time you are tempted to worry about something, channel into prayer all the energy you would have to put into, your, into worry. And say something like, Lord, 
Here's my problem. It looms ever larger in my path, so I am putting it in your hands. I am not going to worry, Lord. Instead, I am going to trust you. I am even going to thank you in advance for what you will do, because you know what you are doing. This may not always be to do, but if you want to overcome worry and experience God's peace, it is something you must consciously do. Now that's true, friends. So there you go, a little bit of advice and a little bit of reassurance, friends. Now let me get my notes here. You know how I do this. I always write notes, always highlight my highlights. Uh, so we're live, friends, on the air, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Uh, Pastor Rick Rowley here live, uh, giving you God's message. Man, I got so much to give you, so much to share. As uh, we are just looking at the NLT Living Water for those who thirst for the Word of God, friends. I know you do. I do. Every day. I strive to be in the Word of God no matter what uh, because uh, this is our life, friends. So uh, I'll be sharing uh, more uh, uh, more uh cornerstones, more stuff out of the NLT. Uh, so let me, here friends, check this out. Let me go back over this again. This is really good. I love this, like I said. Uh, let me go back over this again for you. Hey, Amen. Uh, as I continue kind of in this, I want to just give you an update here. Uh, the uh, Out of Colossians this time, uh, check that out. Go there right now, friends, in your Bible. Because we're on a little Bible study right here. Let God occupy your thoughts. In Colossians 3.24, or 3.2 and 4. A song in the church says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. These are good words to live by, friends. Because one of the strongest deterrents against returning to your old way of life, thank you, friends, your old way of life is to focus upon your Savior and future as a believer, you have been promised eternal life, friends, eternal life, the hope of heaven, and the assurance of spending eternity in the presence of God. When you think about that, the trappings of this world begin to lose their appeal. The next time you feel inclined to dabble with your old life or feel weighed down by the worries of this world or fear that you won't make it as a Christian, remember to do these things, friends. Here you go. So a little bit of homework, some little bit of writing, one through four. You can do it. I have faith in you. Amen. If you're taking notes, number one, Keep your eyes on your final destination. Realize, number I think that's uh, number two here. Realize that worry should not be a part of your life. Number three, the, uh, picture yourself as dead to this world. And uh, I got Facebook. <laughs> what? Facebook is alive tonight. That's awesome. Uh, picture yourself as dead to this world and alive in Christ, friends. And number four, remember that your Redeemer is returning. He's coming back to claim this, friends. we got to be prepared and ready. That's why the armor of God is so important, friends. It is. So if, if you allow these truths to occupy your thoughts, you will find it much easier to obey God and say no to the alluring but damaging enticements of this sinful world. And that's the truth, friends. Uh, we know that. All right, now I got to jump into this one. See, as the Spirit keeps shifting me into these notes, I, I got to throw you at this stuff, friends. It's really cool. Uh, God's peace needs to rule in our hearts, friends. One of the most obvious uh, identifying marks of a Christian is peace. Do you have peace, friends? Can you truly ask yourself, have you got peace in your hearts? 
Uh, as Paul points out in this verse, the peace of Christ has come, or has comes from the Christ, uh, from Christ and rules in a Christian's heart. The Greek verb Paul uses for rule suggests that Christ's peace is to act as an umpire or a judge in our lives, deciding our outlook and mood in the midst of all circumstances. What characterizes Christ's peace, you may ask. Oh, well, Pastor, I'll show you what it is. Amen. Uh, here are a few more uh, biblical uh, descriptions. So, let me grab some notes here real quick. Uh, this is going to be a, a little bit long here. That's all right. You guys can do it. I have faith in you. I know you can. So, one through seven this time, if you're taking notes again. It Number one. It is not uh, it is not anxious about everything but trust God in Philippians 4 6 and 7 uh, it doesn't number two it doesn't doubt that God is in control in mark 435 told you we're having a Bible study friends I'm loading you up on some scriptures uh, number three it doesn't forget God's blessing and answers to prayer in Philippians 4, 6. Again, Philippians is number one. Uh, number four, it should be present in our relationship uh, relationships in Psalm 34, 14. Uh, also, in Romans 12, 18. Number five, it comes from Christ alone in John 16, 33. Amen. Uh, it uh, it is produced by the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5.22. And number seven, it promotes peace with others in James 3.18. Amen. All right, so does the peace of Christ rule in your life? you got to ask yourself that question. Does the peace of Christ rule in your life? If not, you are not living as Jesus really intends you to, to live. God... Or give God your worries and concerns. Cast all your cares upon Him, friends. But it will, uh, let's see, and ask Him to replace them with His peace. This peace will not only calm your heart, but it will also help encourage harmony between you and your Christian brothers and sisters. Amen. All right, so there you go, friends. A uh, little bit of little bit of Bible study tonight here, friends. Uh, so let's look over here since we're in Colossians, living the new life. Colossians uh, 3.16 Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts, friends. Amen. Man, that is so cool. All right, so like I said, we're going to skip the Bible study in the book of Luke. I want to give that later because uh, I got so much to give you. All right. Uh, let me get the, the pen in here. I know this is kind of getting there. But I want to continue this message. Now that I read this. Uh, let's see. Now, I think I did already, but I'm going to give this to you again. John 3, 15 through 19. Uh, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We've got to be reminded of this scripture here, friends. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Uh, let's jump down to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, friends. I'm trying to build you up and give you encouragement. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. 
Fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones, and be anxious for nothing. Amen. All right, so I'm going to recap a couple of things here. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing. It is a free gift of God, and results, and not result of works, so that no one may boast. Uh, Almighty God is the sole creator and sustainer of the universe uh, and all living things. Every breath we take is a gift from him. He desires that we partake of his abundant life, which is full of contentment, rest, uh, happiness, freedom, peace, love, and joy are all the fruits of the Spirit. Now, does that accurately describe your life? Or is your life characterized by anxiety, guilt, or fear, rather than by or a sense of failure and emptiness instead of happiness? If so, there is wonderful good news for you. Why is our experience so different from God's desire to us? This is just a recap, friends, of uh, part one. God did not cause the separation we did. Wait a minute, Pastor. How you? What? What? What did you just say? What did you just tell us? God did not cause the separation. We did. How? In the same way that we inherit physical traits like our hair and eye color, all of us inherited a sin nature from our first parent, Adam. He was the person who first chose to live his life independent. Uh, And apart from God's life, we have all inherited this independent trait and all start out in in life vainly trying to live our lives without God and friends, all without success. We've tried it our way, however long or however old we are. uh, We've done it our way. We've done things without God our way. How's that working out for you? It ain't. It doesn't, friends. It does not work. It's all without success. So we got to be successful by living through God, through Christ, if that makes any sense. Uh, Spirits just shifted me a lot here. Uh, So (laughs) let me go back over this again. It's so good. Uh, We inherited this from our first parent, Adam. He was the first person... Uh, who first chose to live his life independent and apart from God's life. And uh, we have all inherited this independent trait and all start out in life vainly trying to live our first our lives without God and with zero success, friends. So Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, sin is everything we do apart from God's life. We want to be happy and to look to temporary pleasures in this world. Now, let me recap again, friends. Uh, Like acceptance, alcohol, careers, drugs, food, sex, possessions, money, etc. The list is a mile long. It goes on and on. But nothing truly satisfies because... We can't bridge this gap to God in our old sinful uh, nature. Hang on here, friends. I got a torn page. Uh, man, you know, as I as I still I'm still working on these notes, friends, and this is really good. I just really wanted to share this with you, kind of recap here, uh, just a little bit here. But uh, my notes have all come apart and uh, I'm trying to fix them here but so let me go back in this so uh, but nothing truly satisfies because we can't bridge this gap to God on our own old sin nature it keeps us bound friends Uh, we can't do this on our own right Uh, let's see on our own old sin nature and it keeps us Uh, bound and separated from God. We don't want to be separated from God, friends. We 
want to be in God at all times. Uh, living the Christian life is not easy, but it is rewarding, friends. So, it, it, it keeps us bound and separated from God. By God's infinite love and mercy, He has bridged this gap for us, and He calls this bridge grace. Unmerited, undeserved, and unearned, it's a free gift from God. Now, grace is different from everything we do in our own effort. It is unlike every religion anywhere in the world. Grace is all of God. Did you catch that, friends? Grace is all of God and none of us. we got to remember that. Uh, so that, if you're taking notes, write that down. Grace is all of God and none of us. Now, I just read what is grace as I'm recapping part one here. Grace is unmerited. I want to watch and make sure our anchor channel is still going. We've got about an hour on there, so we'll continue this other the other podcast here. Uh, what is grace? You ask, Pastor, what is grace? Well, now, let me explain. Well, let me show you here. Uh, grace is an unmerited favor of God uh, unmerited means that you don't deserve it and can never earn it you can't pay back anything for it and you can never lose it and have no responsibility to maintain it wow now, the meaning of favor means that all of God's kindness and blessings are bestowed on you. It also means that God never treats you according to what you deserve, but only according to the wealth of His kindness, uh, goodness, love, and mercy because of His great love with which He uh, with which he has loved us and made us alive together with Christ. So he might show the surpassing richness or riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Uh, it gives a few little scriptures here, some passage lookups, looks up, lookups, what is that? It's lookups here. Ephesians 2, 4, and 7. Grace is God himself. Uh, it's, now let me write my notes here. Uh, it's Jesus plus nothing. I know I sound like a preacher. I have to, what if I, wait a minute. I know I'm preaching to somebody here. Somebody's getting this powerful message here, friends. This is what the Spirit gives me. So I'm glad that, grateful to give it to you and bring it to you. Amen. I know my kid said, Dad, you sound like a preacher. Well, uh, yeah, hello. That's what I do. That's my calling. That's what I got to do. I, I have to, I mean, I'm sitting on a treasure here. Trust, I don't know what treasure or chest, gold mine. It's a gold mine, friend. Our Bible, our gold mine. We just got to open it up, clear the dust off, get it out from underneath our beds, closets, wherever you're at, and uh, really just get into the Word. Because it's life-giving. It's our bread of life, friends. I'm not kidding. We have to get into this word. Uh, it uh, Look at all the evil that's going on outside. Everything that's happening in the world. Our, our Bibles are our life, friends. we really got to diligently seek the Lord. Amen. So, it was funny. Talking to my kid. Dad, you sound like a preacher. I know. Well, I can't help it. I can, but I don't want to. Because God has given me this... Second chance. He is the God of second chances, friends. And third and fourth and fifth. He really is, friends. Uh, it, so, he gave us this gift of life. Now, what are you going to do with it? So, this is why I'm pushing forward on the podcast. I'm pushing it hard uh, that God has given me this uh, gift to share this Bible knowledge, this Bible insight revelation knowledge with you. 
and I'm amazed uh, at uh, you know what uh, how good this is, friends. It, and it's it makes me excited. Uh, I, I there's purpose and, and, and goals and, and just. Uh, man, just I'm excited about getting up every day and, and just preaching this message, teaching this message. I know it's a little different, but God didn't want it to be the same like everybody else. So share and like, friends. Spread the word, the Good News Gospel, a worldwide live ministry podcast. Pastor Rick Rell here live. Uh, moving up, moving on to the... Uh, to the messages, man. Okay, we've got about, uh, what, five, five, six more minutes here at anchor.com, friends. That's the Apple uh, channel. You guys can catch that at all the uh, Apple and Amazon, Spotify. Uh, check it out. So we're just about uh, out of time here. Well, we got, what, uh, five, six more minutes, ten more minutes here, so we'll keep going on this message, recapping. So, Grace is God himself and it's Jesus plus nothing. Grace is not a concept or an abstract thing. Amen. Grace is Christ Jesus, the Son of God. I'm not kidding, friends. 1 Corinthians 1, 4, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which is given you in Christ Jesus. So we're just recapping part one here, friends. And then once I finish uh, the anchor channel, uh, I'll be going, jumping into the main message here. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that we recap a little bit here, friends. Why not? Cause those guys, the, you know, the, you guys that have missed this, uh, this was a podcast message I did about two years ago, three years ago. And his spirit keeps shifting these old messages and bringing them back out. Uh, so as I've been working on this for a month or so, God laid it on my heart to share it with you guys and to just keep getting this message out. I gotta, I gotta keep bringing this forward and uh, share this message with you. So I'm, I'm glad, glad to do it. I, I, hey, this is, like I said, I'm sitting on a gold mine here. Amen. Uh, what are we at here? Uh, we've got a few more minutes left, so we'll keep recapping on this till we get into the main message here. So, got a question for the church, friends. I'm going to lay it on you. Lay some grace on you. Lay some messages on you here. How is grace delivered to us? Pastor, how is grace delivered to us? I'm going to tell you, friends, right here. A, God has delivered his grace to all of us by sending his son, Jesus, as his gift of eternal life into the world. Now, that is an historical fact. It's proved. John 3, 15, 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him uh, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, that's his promise to us, friends. If you believe on him, uh, seek him with all your heart, soul, your mind. You shall have eternal life, and you shall not perish. Now, the phrase eternal life uh, means the quality of God's life given to us in his son, Jesus. It includes the progressive working of God's life into our lives, uh, gently influencing us to experience His forgiveness, peace, wisdom, love, joy, and a guilt-free living, beginning right now and continuing into eternity. There you go. Uh, friends, you should listen to this message. I know you're, you, you, you know, you sleeping. I know it's late, but you can watch and listen uh, almost like a TiVo thing. Just rewind it and watch it again. you got to soak this in, friends. Alright, we got a few more minutes at our Anchor channel, friends. Check that out. It's really cool. Alright, now you got another question for the church. 
told you we're going to go deep here, friends. No more shallow surfing preaching here. This is deep root messages. And uh, share with your friends on this because this is a really important message. I did a series on this. I'm in part six, and I'll be going to that in a minute here. Uh, we just got uh, just a few more minutes here left on the Anchor channel, but I'm just recapping chat, uh, part one here. Uh, you got to ask yourself, who receives God's grace? Pastor, who received God's grace? Friends, let me tell you. <laughs> here we go. John 3.36, he, he who believes in the Son has eternal life. There you go, friends. There, there's your answer right there. Uh, all right. Um, anchorchannel.com, friends. Check it out. Anchor.com. Uh, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Pastor Rick Riley here live. Uh, late Night Podcast. Uh, friends at Anchor, you guys can catch this entire message here uh, at CastBox, Twitter, Periscope, and of course uh, our channel here at Spreaker.com along with, you guys can check this out, uh, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Tumblr.com, YouTube, and iHeartRadio, friends. And uh, that is uh, pretty cool. We're all over the world, all over the net. Germany, Japan, my friends, uh, Pastor Oni in uh, in Japan, Konnichiwa, Domo Arigato, my friend Midori, awesome, uh, that's awesome, and of course Miss Jackie right here at Twitter and Facebook and Periscope, uh, man, what a prayer print, uh, warrior uh, she is, friends. Go check her out, Miss Jackie. Midnight hour podcast friends go check it out every night at midnight she is online preaching that good news gospel friends you got to check her out uh all right so anchor.com appreciate you being here check out continue over at uh spreaker twitter Castbox, periscope all those channels i mentioned you guys are awesome i'll see you later and uh let me get this loaded up here and we'll continue our main message i'm going to just recap just a little bit more here on uh, part one, recap it because you guys got to hear this message. So, amen. Uh, all right, that's it. Anchor, I'll see you later and have a good night, friends, at anchor.com. Pastor Rick Riley, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast. Checking it out, friends. I'll see you later. Amen. All right, well, we're going to continue our podcast tonight, friends. Uh, let me get this loaded over here. Amen. And uh, where are we at? There we go. Is it? There we go. Hey, save the episode. Save the episode. All right, we'll continue our message. So, as I asked a question to the church here, friends, as we go into our, I guess, our second hour or something like that. Well, we're going into it, into our hour here. We got a question for the church. Who receives God's grace? I got a, I got an answer, friends. I do. John three thirty six. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. Now there is no complicated formula, and need to do something more nearly. Uh, Two hundred verses in the Bible, and it says that anyone in Christ has eternal life. That's it. You ask yourself, Pastor, how can that possibly just be it? It is, friends. I'm telling you, it is. It's in the Bible. Read the Bible. It says that anyone who believes in Christ... Now, I've got to mark that down uh, because that is a... <laughs> that's, that's it right there, friends. That's cool. Uh, anyone who believes in Christ has eternal life. That's it. That's simple, friends. Just right there. If you believe that Christ Jesus is God's gift of eternal life to you, then that belief is evident from God that he has given you eternal life and no one believes on their own. Wow. Even, friends, even our belief 
in Christ Jesus is a loving gift from God. He draws us and reveals his son to us on our own. Uh, so that's, let me go back here. So he reveals his son to us. On our own, He would we would never seek God. Romans 3.11 says, There is no one who seeks for God uh not there or no there is not even one uh so i'm gonna have to redo that too uh john six forty four. no one can come to me unless the father why uh sent me draws him or who i think that's who amen still rewriting my notes here in Matthew 16, 15, 17, he, Jesus, said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barona, because uh, flesh, 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 and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Amen. So let me correct that uh, spot. Now, you guys, uh, check this out. Go back to uh, lesson one. Continue that. As uh, I want to jump over here, friends. Six, lesson six, friends. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna start right here, friends. Lesson six, part six, a new creation in Christ, from God's grace for you. Uh, so I'm gonna go back. We're gonna we're gonna step back a little bit. Uh, number three, friends. Why was I chosen by God to be saved? I'm going to tell you, friends, right here. Out of the New King James Version, Ephesians 1, 4, and 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which we just talked about the grace, uh, to the praise of his glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now Ephesians 1, 11, 14. In him we were also chosen, having predestined, according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. Amen. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed you were marked in him with a seal, uh, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. Number four. There you go. See, I'm moving right along here, friends. This is a long, a really long message, but man, is it good. Uh, I, like I said, I did this a couple of years ago, a few years ago, and uh, man, is it was it uh, amazingly. I, I did a lot. I had a lot of reaction to this. Uh, so uh, let me get caught up here. Uh, number four, my friends, if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, because, man, is it good. Uh, I got another question for the church, friends. And those online that are hearing this, if you guys can 
just check this out man just go through this this is so good uh, I got a question for you can I take credit for my salvation holy cow friends I got an answer for you let's look at Ephesians 2 8 and 10 by grace through faith for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is a gift of God not by works so that no one can boast for we are uh, what happened here God's right God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works with God prepared in advance uh, for us to do all right so question again Number five, what does it mean to be redeemed? That's a good question, church. And I'll tell you the answer here. Galatians 4, 4, 5. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons and daughters. Uh, amen. So hang on here, friends. You know I gotta write notes here, friends. All right. So John eight thirty four through thirty six. Told you we're having a Bible study here, friends. This is this is what I do. This is what I was called to do and bring out as we do Bible studies here, right? We do. Amen. John eight thirty four thirty six. The truth shall make you free. Pastor, what did you just say? I'm going to tell you. The truth shall set you free. Amen. Jesus replied, I will tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. And uh, that's powerful. Man, that is good. All right, let's take notes here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 reads, You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. We were bought at a price, friends. A heavy, heavy price with uh, blood. Christ was thrown on the cross, was buried, buried put on a cross, dragged, scourged, and, and beaten bloody. That is not a pretty sight, friends. If you ever watch Passion of the Christ, uh, that is that is not pretty, friends. Um, but he paid a price. We were bought with a price. So we got to remember who's in us and who it is that we are in, friends. We are Christ in Christ Jesus. Uh, therefore, honor God with your body. So, uh, I think this is another question. Uh, it is. Amen. What proof is there that I am saved? Well, we're getting deep here, friends. Acts 2.21 And everyone who... Let's see, it's Acts 2.21. I'm not even sure I get that out here. Uh, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Uh, 1 John 5.13 I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have, that's his promise, you have eternal life. That is the key right there, friends. Amen. Romans 6.23 Witness in the Spirit. Romans 8.16 The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are are God's children. Now 1 John 5, 5 and 6. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his, by his baptism in water and by the shedding of his blood on the cross not by water only, but by water and blood, and the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. 
Man, that's good. Now, the witness of peace. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. I do not, I go back over that again. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, friends. And do not be afraid. Now, as it says in Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 8, be strong and of a good courage. So John 16, 5 and 24, the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as you look, or as we see in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, says the Lord of the wicked. That's the enemy. That's the devil. The father of lies. Uh, man. Ephesians 2, 17, 19 shows that he came in and preached peace uh, to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. See, not, he, not he's being equal here. Far away and near. For through him we both, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's households. Now, witnesses of love for the brethren. Fruits of the Spirit, of course. Uh, in 1 John 3.14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. And you know that scripture that says something about that, friends. Amen. All right. Let me go make sure our speaker channel is still running. Amen. Technical issues, my friends. Let me pull up my jacket here. Witness it. Well, I go back up here again. First John 4, 7, and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God, right? Everyone loves, has been born of God, and knows God. Whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is love. Witness, number 10, witness of a transformed life. Amen. Yeah, thank you guys for hanging in there with me. This is a long message. I had a lot to say. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 8, 9 Though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with the unexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls 2 Corinthians three eighteen. And we, we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is in the Spirit. Galatians 2.20, defending the gospel. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith and in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And, and what a sacrifice that is, friends. Uh, amen. Man, that is such a, such a sacrifice that he did that for us. Uh, holy cow, I've been on an hour and a half. Wow, this is a good long message, friends. Uh, so, 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 7. We then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. Uh, man. 
Uh, but in all things, we command ourselves or commend ourselves as ministers of God uh, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs and distresses, in stripes, imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, or in sleeplessness, in fastings, joy, purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love. Now that is key right there, friends. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Question how can I be sure I won't lose my salvation? All right, friends. So I'm going to just touch basis on this. But I'm going to continue this Bible study tomorrow. Check it out. We'll be back here live. Same channels, all the channels. We're going to be back on here live. I'm going to close out. Uh, so I am going to wait right here. Because I look, at, I want to get this message out. I'll recap a little bit tomorrow. But I want to make sure. So John... Uh, let's see, I believe that's in the New King James here. Amen. John 10, 28, 29. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. All right, friends, there we go. I got. We're going to end that right here. I don't want to get you overloaded. But you got to hear this word, friends. This is a good message. Uh, given to me, the Holy Spirit put this in my heart to share this with you. And I'm glad I'm glad you guys are hanging out and getting this message. This is really key, important, vital information, friends. It's inside information, friends. I have the, I have, we have the inside scoop. <laughs> so, man... Uh, we got to get this. We we got to get this and hear this. So I'm going to leave off with that, and we're going to go into Romans 8, 15 and 17 tomorrow, friends. Check this out. So if you do a little research, go check it out. Romans 8, 15 through 17, friends. Amen. All right, I'm going to leave you with one last uh, one last uh, scripture, friends. First Peter 5, 8, and 9. I'm going to close out with this one. All right, are you there yet? I can see you looking at your Bibles. I hope you're looking at your Bibles anyway. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Because he's on the prowl, friends, every second, every day. Spiritual warfare. I'm not kidding, friends. It's bad. So we got the antidote. We know what We got God, friends. Verse 9, it says, Resist him, steadfast in your faith, brothers and sisters, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen. So, there you go, friends. You have been battleized, uh, armored up. You got the uh, sinner's prayer of salvation. Let me close out with that, friends. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for me, and I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God, and that I believe you are the Lord, and that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins and wash my heart clean. Come and live in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me to walk with you and live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me and for giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Amen, friends. All right. Well, that's it, friends. Glad you guys are here. Worldwide live ministry podcast, Blasting the Devil, uh, on a quadruple shot tonight, almost two hours. I told you it was jam-packed, friends. Pastor Rick Rowley here live. Uh, that's it, friends. We're out of here. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Blog Talk Radio, tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. Uh, and then I'm going to try to get on here a little earlier tomorrow night, about 6 or 7, uh, at our Spreaker Anchor, CastBox, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Check it out, friends. Preaching and teaching the good message. Somebody called me a rabbi, teacher, 
I don't know, Padre, Father, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I'm just delivering the message, friends, that God gave it in my heart to teach. So I appreciate you guys so much. Check it out, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast, all over the internet, all over the radio, iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, friends. Uh, we finally got on there, and that is so good news. I know it just be a matter of diligence and uh, trusting God to provide that, and he did. So we're here live in the studio up north. You guys are awesome, and I appreciate you. Have a little bit of church service tonight. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, right? Blog Talk Radio, 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, probably with Twitter and uh, Periscope. I'll probably hit them up to that. Uh, let me close everybody out. You guys are awesome. I'll see you later. Castbox.com. I'll see you later. Amen. All right. So there we go, friends. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Twitter, Periscope, you guys are awesome. I'll see you later. All right. All right. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> We're still on the air right here at our Spreaker channel. I'll see you guys later. Amen. And thanks for your support, friends. Pastor Rick Early, Live, Worldwide Live Minister Podcast. I'll see you later. Have a good night, friends. Amen.